Winslow is next. Jerry, hello. Good morning, Douglas. How are you this morning? Fine. Now, what point would you want to make? Well, Douglas, I've been hearing an absolute load of tosh all day. I cannot believe that we are still what does he think he's doing? Years and years after action, which should have been taken, wasn't taken. I just think that until public transport is up and running properly, it's reluctant. Let's get this sorted out. You stop there. Saw it. Saw it, did you? I'm a police officer, you alright? Oh yeah, brilliant. So what was that all about then? He was up my pipe from the top of the hill. I thought I'd lost him. So why didn't you move over? There's no room to move inside. Yes there was. Don't have a go at me, he started it. Can you move your van? I want him done for assault. It's causing an obstruction. Did you get his number? I want him done. Are you sure? You saw it. He's not getting away with that. I use this road every day. Alright, Mr... Um... Dickinson. Mr. Dickinson, you better follow me to the station. Hoxton Way near junction of Waterman's Road. It's a PI accident. Ambulance on way. Sierra Oscar from 181. We're in Godwick Road. Just dealing. Thanks, Narika. Are you sure you're both all right? I was really scared. We were trying to cross the road when I heard these two cars coming really fast. That red one was in front. There was another one, bigger Jeep thing behind. Suddenly the red one swerved, hit the curb, and flipped over. Excuse me. Rika? Sergeant, we've got one female driver alone in the car. Yes. Yeah. We'll know more once the paramedics have got her out. Right. Is that the witness? Yeah, she's quite a good one. She saw most of it. Right. Debbie, have a word with that lot over there, will you? See if they saw anything? Sergeant. Cheers. And apart from the one that scarped, put no other vehicle, just this one? Not as far as I know. Right. Let's have a look. Oh dear. So, what we got? Uh, she's still with us. What's your name? Can you hear me? Hang on. She must be six months at least. Andrew. Sir. Mr. Dickinson been examined. The FME's on the way. Good. You got a statement from him? I'm away to do it now, sir. Good. You'll have my witness statement in five minutes. Problems? An RTA in Hoxton Way. One female injured. Pregnant, apparently. Nurika's with her at St Hughes. Uh, sir, the details of that car that you requested, the owner's shown as Mr Martin Tyler, 44 Fawcett Gardens. Oh, thanks, June. Well, all yours, Andrew. Oh, June, could you uh, look up another one for me? Mm -hmm. It was a car that was in front of Mr Dickinson's. Alpha 184 Whiskey Golf Tango. I haven't done that since I was a PC. Sir, we were meeting at 10 to discuss permanent custody officers. Yes, all right, Andrew. It'll wait. Let's get hold of Mr. Tyler, shall we? Sir. We'll go, will not it? It was a maroon Frontera. Forced me inside and then went herring off after the van. They've been getting at each other since the top of Ockham Hill. Sir? Hmm? 10 o'clock. Permanent custody officers. Andrew Munro's dealing with an assault. Oh. Serious? I witnessed it. Uh-huh. Look, do you think we could leave this meeting till 11.30, Derek? Uh, yes, sure. On the way in, was this? Nothing to get excited about, Derek. Uh, sorry to keep you, Martin Tyler. It's um, uh, Inspector Munro, WPC Page. From Sun Hill, right? Oh, would you like a coffee? Angela. Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Tyler. I'm sorry, I haven't got long. I'm about to take a meeting. I'd like to talk to you about an incident in Ockham Road this morning. Well, lead on. Were you in Ockham Road about nine o'clock? Uh, I use it on my way into work, yes. Were you the driver of a maroon Frontier, a registration number? Um... You know I was. You traced my address and called at my home. <laughs> my wife rang to warn me. We're inquiring into an assault at the Zebra Crossing. I gathered you would be. Somebody obviously took my number and reported it. Well, you got me banged to rights. Uh, there was an unpleasant incident, actually. Some uh, moron in a van came at me. Save it, Mr. Tyler. 
I'm arresting you for assault. You do not have to say anything, but... Arresting me? Please listen, Mr. Tyler. Well, surely this can wait. Never again. Mrs. Morris, tell me what happened. WPC Data, Sun Hill. Remember I told you? I'll never drive again. Just tell me how the accident happened, Mrs. Morris. Was he let you in? Why didn't he let me in? He tried to kill me. I'm sorry. In a little while. All right. Thank you. So you're Oscar from 181 receiving. Go ahead, Narika. Mrs. Morris. She's got head injuries and a broken arm. Baby seems safe, though. Good. Has she said anything? Yeah, but I need to talk to her again. He's, he's had his say, has he, then, this uh, van driver? Mr. Dickinson made a statement alleging assault by you. Uh, uh, assault by me. <laughs> well, what happened, Mr. Tyler? Oh, the idiot cut me up at the top of the hill. All right, it happens. You don't lose your rag. But then he decided to sit in the outside lane. Well, you could see I wanted to overtake. How? Uh, I flashed him. How many times? Once? Twice? More than twice? Oh, perhaps twice. He didn't move? No, he slowed down, didn't he? Then he slowed down some more. This was the overtaking lane, remember? Traffic was starting to stack up behind me. It was deliberate obstruction. The only way to get past him would have been to go inside. Well, I'd never do that. So, what did you do? Oh, I sat and suffered. You're a computer salesman, Mr. Tyler. Area sales manager. Hmm. On your way to a meeting? Yes, end of the month sales figures. Look, meeting or not, I don't let clowns like this van driver get to me. It isn't worth it. I need my car. No license, no job. But he did get to you, didn't he, Mr. Tyler? <sighs> he annoyed me. He made you angry? No, annoyed. But calm? Very much so. As I've said, I don't let clowns like this van driver... You didn't see me? Sorry? I was right behind you. You must have seen me, surely. Uh, well, if you were, I'm sorry. I called out to you. Uh, were you in uniform? I wouldn't have ignored you. I was no more than ten yards away. Uh, heat of the moment. I thought you said you were calm. I watched you, Mr. Tyler. You weren't just angry, you were fuming. No. Did you get out of your car? Yes. Did you approach Mr. Dickinson's van? To have a quiet word, he jumped out. He came at me like a lunatic. Well, you must have seen him come at me. Perhaps you didn't see everything. Mr. Dickinson was punched in the face several times. Well, Self-defense, I assure you. What was I to do? I mean, what's the phrase you use? Minimal force? Like I've told you, I can't afford trouble. Right, sir. Your documents. Cheers, Gov. I'll drive carefully, right? Yeah, nice one. I'd like to know if my husband's here. Uh, in what connection? I don't know. I rang his office and they said he'd been... What? I'd like to see him, please. Yes, sir. Your name is, madam? Mrs. Tyler. 44 Fawcett Gardens. You're going to charge me? Seriously? I've been honest with you. I've kept nothing back. I'm going to be charged for defending myself. You'll be informed. Matthew, uh, back in the cells, please. My meeting really is important. Yeah, this way, Mr. Tyler. I sat and suffered, like they do at Brands Hatch. I've no doubt, sir. I only went to have a quiet word. You went to give him a good pasting. You didn't see him actually hit Mr. Dickinson? No. Perhaps Mr. Dickinson fell out of bed this morning. I take your point, sir. <clears throat> I don't know whether the CPS will. Sorry, sir. I'm not trying to be clever. I want him charged, Andrew. Have we found the other car yet? The car? The one that was in front of Mr. Dickinson's van. All right, sir. Mrs. Tyler's in the front office, sir. Very concerned. I'll have a word. Derek. Sir. Mr. Brownlow getting stuck in, is he? We've just interviewed Mr. Tyler. And? We're not sure yet, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Brownlow wants him sorted. I want permanent custody officers sorted. We meet at 11.30. A row? No, we didn't have a row. You said your husband was tense when he left this morning. No, I meant... It's the quarterly sales meeting. You'd be tense. And he hasn't got any other worries? Personal, financial? No. He's quite normal, actually. What are you suggesting? I think we should leave it there, don't you? Just wait a minute. He's a good husband. We have two boys. He's marvellous with them. Sees them as much as he can. They couldn't wish for a better father. And you say the company think a lot of him? Enough to make him sales director. He's won the Area Sales Award two years running. He doesn't go around losing his temper and bashing people. I've never heard of anything so ridiculous. I was there, Mrs. Tyler. 
I see him? No, I'm afraid not. What's going to happen? We uh, haven't decided yet. It'll be all around the company. They won't like it. Can't you see a way to... Sir. How did it go? I'm not sure. She looked very put out. Of course. He's husband of the year, isn't he? Hard working, clean living, good father. If I hadn't stopped her, she'd have had him going to church on Sundays. <laughs> so, what do we do with him? He's lying. He was pressurising everything else on the road. Well, he's got no previous. His type of driver normally would have. He's got away with it, Andrew. His type of driver usually does. Have we traced the other vehicle yet? No, sir. Right. Well, you better get Matthew to bail him, pending further inquiries. I was on my way to my sister's. Well, she was coming to the hospital with me for a scan. How fast are we going, Mrs. Morris? Well, Hoxton Way is a 50 limit. That's what I was doing. I just got past this car at the roundabout. It was caught behind a lorry. And then suddenly, he was right up behind me. He was so close that I could see him. Well, I'd upset him, hadn't I, getting past. Would you recognise the driver? It was a man. In his 30s. White shirt and tie. Just a shirt? I think he had his jacket hung up in the car. And what about the car? A uh, maroony colour, you know, like a jeep type thingy. Did you get the number? Well, I didn't think. He was this close, right on me, flashing his lights and the horn was going. He was weaving. He was trying to go up the inside and then come back out again. Well, I didn't know where to go or what to do, so I went faster. But then when I went faster, he went faster. Leave me alone, I kept saying, me baby, how have I gone into this? Please, God, what have I done? I hit the kerb, and then, I don't remember. See you, please, love. Deb, what's the latest on the accident in Austin Y? Oh, Narika's still at the hospital. This is a pregnant lady. Yeah. Oh, she got it wrong, didn't she? What's that, Dave? Well, pregnant women, they shouldn't be on the road. Why? That's why she should be driving a Hoover at home, eh, Dave? Come on, lads, come on, mate. What were you saying the other day, eh? You're fed up making allowances for women drivers. A face full of BMT, I think it was, wasn't it? No, we weren't. Sorry, lady. George, you got a minute? What, got it wrong, is he? He's stirring, isn't he? Oh, so you don't mind if this Mrs Morris is on the road, then? You don't object? Well, would you drive if you were six months gone? I mean, you're at a funny stage, aren't you? A funny stage, you that, Deb. Women in that condition. Well, they can't be as sharp, can they? Yeah, biologically. Oh, biologically. Oh, they've really studied it, haven't they? Come on, time we go. No, hang on. Come on. All I'm... That's a good idea. You know what you two are, biologically? You're prehistoric. <laughs> nice one, Deb. Sorry, but that just makes me sick. Right, Inspector, thank you. But it's also unnecessary. Hello, darling. All right, Rach, what is it? Mr Hedges, sir. He was in Hoxton Way this morning. He witnessed the accident with Mrs Morris. Uh, no, Constable. I didn't see it. I saw a red escort being chased up. All right, Rach, thanks. Uh, go on, Mr Hedges. Well, I was just turning off. I thought no more about it till I turned on the radio and heard about an accident. Well, thank you for coming in, Mr Hedges. I wouldn't have bothered, but it was a woman driving the escort. And being harassed. Oh, wicked it was. What time was this? Ten past nine, near as damn it. And what was doing the harassing? I only had seconds. It was right up her jacksie. Headlights flashing, horn going. Maroon Frontera. Your running with Mr Tyler in Ockham Road took place at 9 o'clock. That would put him in Hoxton Way at 9.10, the time of the accident. He'd be extremely wound up. It's purely circumstantial. The vehicle that forced Mrs Morris to swerve inside was a maroon Frontera. No number. But descriptions of the driver tally, right down to the shirt and tie and jacket in the car. We must see Mr Tyler again, sir. Of course we must. But in view of my disagreement with him, let's not seem to be handing him unnecessarily. Mr. Browner said what? Well, can you leave the meeting till lunch? Oh, yes, why not? What else have I got to do? <sighs> Is he all right? I'm sorry? Well, this sudden urge to be at the sharp end. 
two and a half hours on a piddling little assault. Andrew Munro jumping up and down like a scalded cat. It's rather more than a piddling assault, Derek. I thank you, Andrew. Keep me informed, will you? Yes, sir. It appears that Mr. Tyler was very lucky not to have killed somebody this morning. Oh, I see. Mr. Tyler, I'm sorry to bother you again. Inspector. I have some further questions for you. Oh, I thought we'd said it all. Not connected with the assault. Could you tell me what route you took to work after the incident between you and Mr. Dickinson in Upham Road? I had to pick up one of my junior salesmen, Darren. He lives out at Galata Lane. Oh, I'd like to talk to him. Well, if you'd like to wait here. He hasn't asked us what it's about. I have a feeling he knows. What's he up to? Darren Vicky. Inspector Munro, WPC Page. Oh, thank you, Mr. Tyler. Oh, right. How did you get into work this morning, Mr. Bickley? Darren, normally I drive. My car's gone in for a service. Mr. Tyler picked me up. When was this? About nine o'clock. So at uh, ten past nine, you and Mr. Tyler would have been where? Uh, using the back doubles. Where was your car being serviced? Oh, I'm not sure. It's always collected. But did you have any appointments early this morning? My car went in, didn't it? Oh, that's not what I asked. You'd have a diary? Yeah, I'd... may I? Mr. Tyler's your boss, yeah? Yeah. You get on well with him? Yeah. Making your way up the ladder? That's what it's all about. You had an appointment at nine o'clock, the other side of Sun Hill. Yeah, uh, it was cancelled. It's got must written by it, with an asterisk. Or did you keep the appointment? I've just said it was cancelled. If you did keep it, you couldn't possibly have been given a lift here by Mr. Tyler this morning. We can check. The car service as well. You don't seem at all curious why we're here, Darren. Perhaps you already know. Tell him, Polly. There was a serious accident in Hoxton Way this morning. A car overturned. The woman driver was trapped. She's pregnant and still in shock. I didn't know. You didn't know what? There'd been an accident. Did Mr. Tyler ask you to give him an alibi? Come on. You kept your nine o'clock appointment. Mr. Tyler phoned me there. At what time? Half past nine. He told me to say that if anybody asked, he'd have to pick me up. You never asked why? I just thought he wanted to get out or something, you know, meeting a client. It could have been anything honest. Yeah, what was it? Me again. I'm sorry. You think Tyler knew he caused the accident? He sorted himself an alibi with this Darren Bickley as soon as he got into the office this morning. Uh, sir, we've managed to trace that second car that you were after, the zebra crossing Ockham Road. Ah. There were two occupants. They both confirmed that Tyler hit Mr. Dickinson several times. Well, thanks, Jim. Look, do you think you could get somebody down and get a statement from them both? Certainly. Well, that'll take care of the assault. We can tack on a driving without due care. Yeah, and the court will just slap his wrist. What we need is the second due care in Hoxton Way. It's far more serious. Well, two incidents in one morning, plus Tyler trying to get himself an alibi. Yeah, roll him up, slap him with a lot. I want him off the road. Except we can't place him conclusively at the scene. Well, let's have him in again. Well, that'll go down well. Tina, chat. He's missed a nice guy, isn't he, Andrew? Mrs. Tyler? Can you please tell me what's going on? Do sit down. You've been to Martin's office again. You've talked to Darren. Yes, Darren Bickley's made a statement about a second incident that happened this morning. An accident. Look, would you like to go somewhere quieter? Darren told me. He rang to warn me. He said Martin had got him to tell lies about where he was this morning. I'm afraid so. There's been an accident? Yes. And you're blaming Martin? Oh, we'll be talking to him again. Your husband could be in serious trouble, Mrs. Tyler. It's been a bad quarter for him. You know what sales targets are? As soon as you reach one, they set another. It's never ending. Was he tense and anxious when he left this morning? It's when he drives. It all gets to him. He changes. Turns into I don't know what. I knew when he got in the car this morning. You knew what? I won't get in with him. He needs his license. They'd get rid of him. They won't care. He can't help it. He's a good driver. He really is. We've got this Tyler back in then. He's been interviewed now, sir. That's a whole morning. I don't suppose there's any chance of a result before the end of the day, is there? Tyler could win awards for being slippery. Oh, well, that won't look good on our performance indicators. Mr. Brown has still come out of it smelling of roses, though. Yes. Declaring war on dangerous driving. It's like asking people to vote for mothers. 
Look, if Mr. Brownlow does happen to emerge, it is lunchtime and I did call in. Yes, of course, sir. Yes, I was in Hoxton Way this morning, but I didn't cause an accident and I didn't see an accident. Look, I can explain. I explain first why you tried to mislead us. Well, yes, yeah, when I heard about the accident, I thought I'd be in the frame for it. Because you just had a brush in Ockham Road with Mr. Brownlow? Yes. How did you know there'd been an accident? You called Darren Bickley to give you an alibi. The accident had happened barely 20 minutes earlier. The lads in the office were talking about it, a prang in Hoxton Way. I mean, perhaps I wasn't thinking straight, perhaps at the back of my mind... Well, you know what they say. No, what do they say? Well, once your name's down on the sheet... That's rubbish, Mr Tyler. Don't insult my intelligence. You were in Hoxton Way at ten past nine? I would be, yes. At that time, a red escort being driven by Mrs Morris was being pressurised by Maroon Frontera, being driven by somebody who looked remarkably like you. You do see our problem, don't you? I, I do. The escort was forced off the road. Well, if you say so. No, I don't say so, Mr Tyler. Mrs Morris does. Uh, <laughs> ah. You've got a problem with that, have you? Look, I wasn't there, but come on. I mean, women drivers. If you were the driver of this Maroon Frontera, you'd have looked in your rearview mirror. You'd have seen the mayhem you caused. You probably think somebody had taken your registration number. You want to place yourself as far away from the incident as possible. You do see why we've called you in again, don't you? Certainly I do. Your wife's been in again, too. What for? She thinks the job is getting to you. Oh, she's a rock. Don't know what I'd do without her. So why are you putting her through all this? Through what? You're driving for a start. Is it true she won't get in the car with you? It seems nobody's got a good word for you, Mr. Tyler. Your colleague Darren, your own wife. What do they know? She doesn't try. Darren's a kid. Calm down. It's a conspiracy. No, it's a sequence of events that only makes sense if you were up the backside of a red escort at ten past nine this morning. Then everything falls into place. Have you any idea what it's like to be harassed on the road, Mr. Tyner? <laughs> right, uh, come on, I've had it. Me too, this morning, remember? What would have happened to me if I hadn't have pulled over? And Mrs. Morris was driving correctly. Fifty miles an hour and a fifty limit. Ah, uh, terrific. Not fast enough for you? You can't sit on their bump of a miles on end. Well, that reminds me, the driver of this maroon Frontera was practically in Mrs. Morris's back seat. She saw him clearly. She'll be identifying him, of course. She should have moved over! That dozy cow wouldn't shift! So what does she do? She gives me a bit of brake light, don't you? Get back, she says. Get back or I'll stamp on the pedal. Now that is dangerous driving. That is asking for trouble. I flash her, I hit the horn. She wants it, does she? She wants it. She don't budge. I'll give her another mile, one more mile, and I'll ram the silly cow. I swear it. She'll move then. All right, Mr. Tyler. I run a sales team. I drive for a living on roads full of arseholes. I've got somewhere to be. Mr. Tyler. I'm not your average clueless pillock. They're up there in my way, in my face, needling me, provoking me. What are they doing on the roads? <sighs> Thank you.